All right, so where we left off with this knife yesterday is we had ground our bevels, we did a hollow grind on there, and then we started running in uh, our tapered tang. We did that on the belt grinder, then we cleaned it all up, finished it all off, made it nice and flat and smooth with a hand sanding. Uh, the next steps, what we're gonna do today, the first thing we're gonna do is get the kiln fired up so we can get this thing heat treated right off the bat. Then, well, actually while that's warming up, we need to pick out some wood. The last knife that I made like this, I used Coco Bolo. I love Coco Bolo, but I don't really wanna make the exact same knife over again, with the exception that this one has a tapered tang. We're gonna take a look at some of the woods that we have. I've got a lot of really cool woods that some of you wonderful viewers have sent me, stuff from New Zealand, Australia, some of that Kauri, Kuri, I forget what it's called. I ruin words all the time. But anyways, it's that ancient wood. It's, it's said to be known as some of the oldest hardwood on earth, uh, found in like the bogs. Really neat stuff. Maybe some of that will tickle my fancy for this. Not entirely sure. I've also got a little bit of work to do that I'm gonna do off camera to keep up with my regular orders for my customers. I'm not gonna bore you guys with that stuff. And then we're just gonna get right onto this thing. Hopefully, I'm really, really hoping we can get this thing finished today, but uh, we'll have to find out. All right, let's see what kind of woods we have going down. This is my little wood stash. It's probably pretty dark to you guys. So this is my big old block of Cocobolo. 2760. I like the grain on this though. Uh, that's a good wood. I don't know. I like that. Um, I've got all this. This is Paduk Padok. I don't know. Or maybe this Paduk Padok. Maybe this Babinga. I don't know. What's this? I don't know. What is this? You know, when you buy these woods, they, they come with this wax on them. I mean, I understand it preserves them without actually soaking into the grain, but it's kind of hard to look. So I want to see what the end grain looks like. I'm not sure if this one's going to be that good. I think our grain is going like this. Yeah, so that might, unless I cut it like that. I'm not sure what that would look like. Um, so this is the stuff that I got from Australia. So we've got some really sweet woods here. We've got silver ash, red cedar. Check out that. Check that wood out. That stuff would be pretty. Kind of soft, but very, very pretty. Um, what's this? Rose mahogany. That might be a nice looking wood. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited to do wood on this. Uh, Tasmanian blackwood. Is that the one? Is that the one to go for? It's got that nice, like that luminescence, luminosity. And then some more silky oak. I used this in a project. Really beautiful stuff. Also, I do have a piece of koa. I was saving this for something super special. Look at that. That is incredible. Stabilized koa. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna say I, I don't know why. I, I bought this on Instagram. Some one of these like flash sales or something. So I got it. But I'm gonna save that for something else. Other than that, I got black walnut, a whole bunch of maple. These are all maple slabs. And then this. This is a very odd wood. Ah! wood avalanche. How do you even say that? Promosia? I have made a knife with this. I made a kitchen knife for my wife with this. And it's got a really neat grain structure. And it's almost like bamboo, very linear. That is a loud plane. Very linear grain structure. Quite a hardwood, actually very hardwood, very heavy. Like the weight of this block is just shocking. Um, and then here, here are all these blocks of kauri, kauri, kauri. <gasps> I don't know if these are gonna be long enough. I've got another knife on the go with this stuff right now. I don't think these will be long enough. Got some zebra wood, not too crazy about that. So I live out in the country and I would assume that the noise pollution would be kind of minimalized, but it's a loud day today. No decisions yet, I, I need to kind of look at this stuff. I might be leaning towards this Afro, whatever it is, this bamboo-esque stuff. But, uh, you know, I didn't turn the kiln on, so I need to get that done. We'll come back to our decision momentarily. the blade and uh, just in a temper cycle right now and while I was working on some of these other custom order knives that I have these little guys I just want to take a minute I'm going to show you a really nice little setup a combination of belts that I really really like using to get a really nice so it's a pretty good satin finish right there 
and I found a really, really simple way to do it. So let me take you to the belt grinder and I'll kind of show you what I've, what I've been using lately and I've had a lot of success with it. All right, so when I'm ready to start putting on like my final satin finish, I really like these Trizact belts. Usually I'll go down to even just like 80 grit. That's as coarse as I'll go. And then I'll come to these Trizact. This one here is a 3M Trizact. This is an A45. They have different grits. I've kind of experimented with a few of them. I really like this A45. And this is the first step of the process. So what I'll do is I'll just get everything nicely cleaned up. And one tip as well, a lot of times if you're having troubles getting everything matched up, you, you need to be careful, but sometimes I'll actually work right from the very edge of the belt and just kind of scratch that line in. I find sometimes if you're, when you're cleaning stuff up with really fine grits, it's hard to get it all perfectly matched. Obviously as well, you gotta think about every time you switch a belt, you're essentially working with a possible different diameter on your wheel, if the belt's thicker or thinner. And so that sometimes plays into it as well. So what I'll do is I'll come here, and the first thing I'll do is I'll kinda of start on the corner and just kinda of bring it across. And what that does is it establishes a really nice uniform radius over the whole thing. Then once I've got that in there, and again, you gotta be super, super careful when you're doing that, but once I've got that in, then I can come in and start kinda of blending everything and feathering everything together. Here's this, I just put some scratches on it. But you see, we, we're not really all that beautiful there. It's quite uneven, but we're gonna fix that right now. Now when I'm doing this, I'm using incredibly, incredibly light pressure. All right, then once we've got that pretty much evened out, I will grab one of these super fine surface conditioning belts. You can think of this basically as Scotch-Brite on a belt. And when you're doing that Trizac, when you're using these, you don't have to be absolutely perfect. I mean, it's not flawless, but it's a lot better than it was. But we'll come over to here now, use some pretty heavy pressure, and this will actually just blend everything, clean it all up. Still, all the same rules apply to when you're grinding with a regular abrasive belt, but it's much slower, and it kind of just, because it's a little thicker, there's a little cushion in it, it kind of just really, really evens everything out and kind of smooths it all over. Put my earplugs in. We're not done yet, but I just want to show after a couple of passes, that's doing a pretty good job there. Like I say, there's still a couple marks we're gonna pull out of that side right there. But it, uh, these belts, I tell you what, they are, I, I really, really like these. That is a nice little finish right there. And the beauty about this is that it involves no hand sanding whatsoever, which, I mean, that, that's incredibly time consuming. I, I do like the look of hand sanded blades, but it's, it's nice when you can just, you know, that quickly we can get a really great finish. It's all done with machines, we're saving time, and uh, I don't know, really, really a fan of these surface conditioning belts in conjunction with the Trizax to get a final finish put on a blade. So I had a question on yesterday's video. A gentleman had asked if I find it harder to freehand a hollow grind or a flat grind. And uh, he had mentioned that he finds it so much easier to freehand hollow grinds and get nice straight lines, nice clean bevels. I'm in the exact same boat. I find it much more difficult to freehand a flat grind. I'm not sure why that is. My thoughts are maybe the fact that once you've got your main bevel established, you know, this thing, well, this is a 10 inch contact wheel that I'm using. And I think maybe, you know, once you've got this nested into the wheel, it's kind of easier to keep it there. And it's kind of more, mm, whereas a flat grind, I, I don't know what, maybe that's just my thoughts, but in theory, there's more surface area contacting what you're grinding against, so the wheel, than on a flat grind. I mean, if this was a straight line, there would be less actual distance of contact. So maybe you just have more area to contact when you're hollow grinding. And I mean, it's quite a small scale. It's, it's not like it's like, oh, it's way more surface area. But in theory, when you do the math, you know, a straight line is a straight line. If you curve it there, you've got more distance, more surface area that you're actually using to keep the grind nice and flat. So maybe that's what it is. I'm not entirely sure, but I definitely find it more challenging to do freehand flat grinds. Uh, uh, somehow the hollow grinds, they just seem to kind of come. Once you've got your initial bevel in there, boom, it seems like you've got a great place to work from. That's that's just my thoughts, but who knows? All right, so we've got this thing all tempered out. It's all ready. I think what we'll do with this guy now is we'll go ahead and hand sand it. Actually, you know what? Right now, what I really want to do, I want to figure out the wood we're going to use. Still haven't made any decisions. Oh, no. I left this on the floor next to my grinder. 
<laughs> it's, it's getting wet. That's a fail. I'm, I'm curious what this is, but I'm not sure if the end grain's gonna work. Uh, anybody else feeling this Tasmanian blackwood? It's got some nice shine to it. A red cedar's pretty slick, but I don't know if that would be well suited to this. Or we go with silky oak. Silky oak, silky oak, I don't know. Hmm. The one thing with wood scales is that there's so many variables. Oh man. Oh man. I really need to think about this still. This is a really hard decision. It shouldn't be, but it is. I still don't know. So we have indeed decided to go with a black walnut. Oh, where where did I put where did I put the black walnut? Oh, duh. Uh, just need to put a end mill in here. I'm gonna use my milling machine to kind of true up this block. Then I'll cut it in half for uh, you know to get two scales. But I'd like it all trued up first, and then again I'm gonna put it in after we cut it just to make sure those surfaces are really really flat and smooth. So let's go ahead and swap this thing out real quick. Alright, so we've got our blocks machined down. Obviously, we're gonna have to take them down thinner because they're a little too thick still, but I think that grain should line up quite nicely. I think that's gonna look all right. Once we put this together, we kind of get a real good sense of the taper and how dramatic it is. But one of the reasons I wanted to go with the darker wood is because I'm gonna do a polish on this, obviously, it'll be shiny steel, and I think it'll be a nice contrast. You'll really notice that taper with the shiny metal and in between these two darker pieces of wood. So what we're gonna do, and it'll be tomorrow, we're gonna machine these down, thin them out a little bit more, the fasteners I'm going to use, uh, they're these, I think they're called Corby bolts. The name is, the certain name escapes me right now, but essentially what you do is when you drill through the wood, you drill this diameter right here, and then you kind of counterbore it and you leave a little step in there so that the shoulder on here, the shoulder on there is what will grab the wood and kind of pull it, and yet this will still help keep everything centered. And then with these, you need to leave enough sticking out. You see how they have a slot on each side? You leave more than that bottom of that slot sticking out so that when you go to grind your scales down, you end up grinding that slot away and it just looks like a solid brass pin. Really, really slick little fastener. That is what we are planning on using to glue these scales. Sorry, bolt these scales, fasten these scales when you go to glue them up. And because of the fact that, well, they're not just pins, you know, if you're using a pin, you could just leave it long and grind this whole thing as you wanted. We need to be a little bit more careful with our thickness before glue up because obviously we gotta make sure that these things are going to work properly. All right guys, we're gonna shut her down right there. The sun is setting. Um, the day kind of got away on me, not necessarily away on me, but uh, I got a lot of work done on some custom orders, which is great. I know I said really I wanted to get this thing done today and we, we didn't get close. So what we did get done was we got heat treated, so that's really good, and then we got our scales chosen. That was like a big ordeal for me. I don't know why I couldn't decide on what I'd wanted, but we got that done, and then we also machined them down a little bit. Still need to take them a little thinner so we can uh, you know, just have the proper thickness and tomorrow we're gonna get a super awesome start like early like 4 30 today i slept in till 6. but tomorrow we'll be up at 4 30 get this here video edited and uploaded to youtube so we can hopefully be in the shop here by like 
eight or nine, that would be really awesome. And that should give us time to finish this whole thing off. I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. You can do that by clicking on this little circle right here. And then you know the drill up here on this side of the screen. I've got a couple other videos or playlists for your viewing pleasure. Thank you guys so much for watching. Cheers.